In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of a Taylor series and a Maclaurin series. Now, we, we recognize those words because we're already familiar with Taylor polynomials and Maclaurin polynomials, and these are, in fact, very closely related. So, in fact, let's actually start there, and we use that as kind of a jumping off point. All right, remember, what, what was a Taylor polynomial? Well, remember, you could have any function, and you could approximate that function by a polynomial uh, with degree of your choosing. You could approximate it by a degree one polynomial. We would just call that, that a tangent line, right? Because it's a, a, uh, a function, a polynomial, y equals mx plus b, that approximates your function around a point. So you have like a just a tangent line. But you could also have Taylor polynomials of higher degree, like quadratics that would approximate your function or a cubic, or degree four, or degree five, they would approximate your function no matter if it was trigonometric, exponential, logarithmic, it, it doesn't matter. And what we found was that the higher the degree that you used, the more accurate the approximation. So, you know, if you did five terms, that would be more accurate than if you had only done four terms. And without going through a lot of the detail again, this was the pattern for the terms in a general Taylor polynomial. Right, and so these guys approximated F. But then, you know, if we start thinking about this, you say, well, if these approximations get better for every following term. If, it, if they get better and better, what would happen if we just keep going, right? What if we kept doing not a not hundred terms, not a thousand terms, not a million terms, but what if we went towards infinity and, and turned this actually into an infinite series? It would actually be a, a some some sort of power series, right? Because you have coefficients uh, of x time minus c to the nth power. So what would happen if we keep going? Well, we wind up getting these things called Taylor series, not Taylor polynomials. By definition, a polynomial has a fixed degree, where a Taylor series, on the other hand, keeps going, uh, going and going on uh, for forever. All right, so for a Taylor series, let's assume that our function has infinitely many derivatives. Because if you want to continue this pattern of uh, adding more and more terms, with every subsequent term, you're going to need another derivative. The first derivative, then the second derivative, then the third derivative, and the tenth derivative. So if you want to do this for forever, you have to have that many derivatives available. So let's assume that your function has infinitely many, infinitely many derivatives like uh, like sine x. Sine's derivative is cosine. Cosine's derivative is negative sine. Negative sine's derivative is negative cosine. You can do that for forever. That'll never stop. You'll never run out of derivatives. All right, so if you do, then let's think about what this pattern would be for this. You can almost think of it as an infinitely long polynomial. Well, each term would have a certain derivative of f evaluated at c divided by that term factorial, that, that number factorial, times x minus c raised to that power. And so you can see this happening here for all these individual terms. You have f prime of c, so that's first derivative, divided by one factorial times x minus c to the first power. Then the next term is the second derivative of f divided by two factorial times x minus c to the second, right? And then to the third and the fourth and the fifth. So I think we've discovered the pattern of the generic term and we will let this go from zero, not up to a finite stopping point, but up to infinity. And this would not be a Taylor polynomial, it would be a Taylor series. All right, now the cool thing about this is it's not an approximation anymore. Because, you know, even if we had done a thousand terms, even though that would have been super, super accurate and super, super uh, approximates F super, super well, at the end of the day, it would still just be an approximation. A very, very good one, but still an approximation. These would not be equal. If you let this go towards infinity, then what you actually have is an equality with F. These guys are actually the exact same. So you can represent, let's say, like e to the x by a power series by, by doing this process here. Now, the catch is, is it doesn't equal the power series for all x values. It only equals the function 
for all the X's that are in your interval of convergence, if you remember like the radius and interval of convergence, because your function might be defined at 10, but if your uh, power series here, if 10 is not in the interval of convergence, then that would mean that this series would diverge, but how can you have a diverging power series equal to a number? That just doesn't work. And so this uh, match, this equality only holds when F is defined at X and the power series is defined at X, meaning um, it's in your interval of convergence. So the, that's the cool thing is it's not an approximation, it's an equality now. We have ways of representing functions by power series by going through this process. Uh, the last small little note that I'll make is that a Maclaurin series, we haven't really talked about those. Remember, this is the same thing as for Taylor uh, series or Taylor polynomials rather, that a Maclaurin series is the exact same thing as a Taylor series, just specifically the centered at zero. So if your Taylor series is centered at four, that's not a Maclaurin series. But if it's centered at zero, then we call those guys in particular Maclaurin series. They're a specialized type of Taylor series. All right, now in the next videos, we're actually going to go through and show you how to actually find a Taylor series representation for a function. Uh, we'll give you some steps and we'll even do a short example, um, but we'll cover those in the next video.